him I am on the winning side
Thank you so much. What a joy. Thank you, choir, for singing uh, that song. And uh, you, you just got transported back to an old tent meeting. And uh, the choir did a wonderful job just reminding us of some good old-fashioned East Tennessee music. And uh, thank you, thank you, choir, for doing that. I'm going to ask Brother Paul Pritchard if you don't mind to come up and pray for us here in a moment. The rest of you be seated. But I was thinking about that song that we just sang. I'm on the winning side. 1994, I was in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. Uh, Dr. Curtis Hudson was the editor of The Sword of the Lord back then. And now uh, Dr. Shelton Smith, after him, uh, he took over. But uh, Dr. Hudson was singing that song. It was an old song, but he kind of resurrected it amongst uh, independent Baptist churches and uh, got it um, popular in, in, in some circles. But uh, here is a frail piece of humanity because cancer had racked his body and he was not long for this earth and he would go the next uh, year, March, I believe he went to heaven. But uh, he stood there and sang the, that song, I'm on the winning side. Reminding us that we're on the winning side, not because you're so strong and able to do what you need to do. Uh, we always like to have a good, strong team. Some of your team didn't have a good, we didn't have a good, strong team yesterday, I guess. But uh, you like to have a good, strong team, say we're on the winning side, we're going to make it happen. But we're not on the winning side because we're going to make it happen. We're on the winning side because the captain of our team, our Savior, the captain of our salvation, and Jesus Christ. And thank God for that. Thank you for being here today. If you're joining us via live stream, thank you for that. We're so excited that you're joining us. If you're listening on the radio, this is Buffalo Ridge Baptist Church right here in Gray, Tennessee. If you're watching on YouTube or one of the other platforms, we challenge you to subscribe and like and uh, comment about the, uh, the, the um, broadcast because it just helps us get the word out to more folks. But thank you for being in church this morning. Brother Paul Pritchard is such a wonderful encouragement to me. I'm going to ask him to come pray for us, and then Brother Daniel will come make a few announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is wonderful to be on the winning side this morning, isn't it? You know, it reminds me of that verse of Scripture where it says, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And I'm thankful this morning we can sing about it and uh, we can enjoy what we're singing and we can actually know what we're singing. Amen. That we're on the winning side. Let's pray and ask the Lord the blessing this morning. Our Lord, we love you this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the privilege we have to pray. Thank you, Father, that we have access to your throne through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, today uh, for salvation that you've given to us. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we are saved by your marvelous grace this morning, and we do give you praise and thanksgiving uh, for that salvation today. And Lord, we ask you to bless the time. Thank you for the singing. Pray for the preaching of the Word of God this morning. Lord, thank you for all that you're going to do today. And Lord, we'll be so careful to give you the praise and you the honor and you the glory. For we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 first time in a long time, there's a connect card in the pew in front of you. If you could take that card out uh, sometime during the service and fill it out just with as much information as you're comfortable sharing, uh, there is a guest services counter as you leave out in the lobby. And if you drop that off there, go by that table or that counter when you leave. We have a gift we want to give you just to thank you for being a guest in service with us. We're so glad that you're here. And then we'll just make a few announcements. There's just a couple things that uh, are coming up right away. And then uh, one thing that's just uh, down the road, but want you to be able to take advantage of it and so want to put the uh, information out there early so you can take advantage if it applies to you. So this coming Saturday, uh, we are excited about having a worker training. We're having next week, Gabe Rule with us all Sunday. Uh, he's going to be a great friend of our ministry and uh, we're looking forward to having him preach. But if you are a worker of any kind at Buffalo Ridge, you serve in any capacity, uh, I think they've got a slide they can put up on the, uh, on the screen uh, for uh, this coming Saturday. We've got a worker training time and uh, if you are coming, uh, are able to come to that. We've asked that you have RSVP to that so we can know you're coming, but I'm telling you, uh, the, that's the small aspect of it. You can, uh, if they get it up there, that slide up there, you can maybe even pull your phone out and scan it uh, and uh, take you to a form to, uh, to sign up, or you can find it on our, uh, find it uh, from our church uh, family Facebook page. We'd be glad to get you signed up or let us know, but we want you here because as a church family, uh, there's a lot of different things that we get to do, to do. And, uh, but one thing is we want to make sure we go always getting better uh, as we
we go, reaching out to people and loving on people and showing people that we care. And if we're going to be a church that's making a difference in our community, whether you can come to the meeting this week or not, if you say, well, I don't even do anything at this church, I want you to know, even if this is your first Sunday here as a church, we want to be the type of church that just loves people and shows the love of Christ to the people that are in our community. And so we're having a great training time for all those who are serving in any capacity at our church. You can come out this coming Saturday from 10 o'clock to 1130. We'll have a great time with that. And uh, if you can't make it to that, then uh, just let me know. We'd be glad to get you some of the information that we share, uh, but it'll be a great time. And then uh, next year in March, March 1st and 2nd, every year we have a, a married couples retreat. It's just a great time. And, uh, and we want you to know when it is so you can plan on coming. Uh, enjoying the journey is our theme for this coming couples retreat. And, uh, and so I want you to know if you don't have a, a bulletin there, you don't have a pen or paper, just somehow lock it in your mind, get your phone back out and, uh, and put it in there so you can make plans to come to our couples retreat. And we'll be having some information in the next week or so, so you can get signed up to get the early bird special for that. But it's a great time of fellowship together with other couples, a great time of edification for you and your spouse. And so I want you to be able to take advantage advantage of those things. There's a lot of other stuff, stuff going on at the church. We had a great harvest party yesterday. Thank you for all who worked and all that went into that. We had a wonderful time. Over uh, 400 different kids registered having come yesterday to the church and so their families with them. So just thanking the Lord for all that has happened, all that's coming up and want you to know those things so that you can take advantage of them uh, as they come. So those are all the announcements. We're going to stand together as Brother Dan comes to lead us in song 391, Trust and Obey. worship and thankful for the chance to get to do that. Father, bless us now as our prayer. Thank you for this offering. I pray that you bless it, dear Lord. I pray that you bless uh, the gift, bless the giver, bless those that don't have to give, dear Lord. That's all uh, in your hands, dear Lord. Thank you for, uh, for the opportunity, though, and I pray that you would just work in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. you may be seated. Thank you. 
Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? I need him every hour. I need thee every hour, most gracious, no tender voice that I can be so full. I need thee, oh, I need thee every hour, I need thee, oh, bless.
Amen, amen. Thank you. And I want to preach about that marred vessel here in just a moment. Trust it's a blessing to you. And uh, thank God that He doesn't throw the clay away. Well, I want to preach from Jeremiah chapter 18. If you find your place there, Isaiah, Jeremiah, the two, two large books in the Old Testament, Jeremiah's after Isaiah. As you find your place in Jeremiah 18, I did hear this story about these preachers. And they were arguing back and forth. I know you'd never believe that, but sometimes preachers argue. They were arguing back and forth of who was the best. One was a Methodist preacher, one was a Presbyterian, the other was a Baptist. And uh, that Methodist, as they were walking along, he said, well, ain't y'all never heard of John Wesley and Charles Wesley, those powerful brothers? They're the ones that started. John Wesley was the founder of Methodist Church. He said, haven't you ever heard of the hymn? Nobody any better. The Presbyterian pastor said, well, he said, haven't you ever heard of um, Billy Sunday? Million, wa- million souls walked the aisles of his gospel meetings. He said, boy, you can't get any better than Billy Sunday. And he was Presbyterian. He said, boy, you can't get any better than that. And that Baptist, he said, well, y'all ain't never heard of a little preacher named John the Baptist, have you? God says nobody born among women any better than him. He's John the Baptist. And so they kept arguing back and forth. And they were walking down this country road and uh, saw an old barn there. And a skunk uh, sl- went in into the corn crib there beside that barn. He said, I know one of them. said, I know what we'll do. We'll have a preach-off. We'll see who can preach in with that skunk. And uh, so they got in there and they shut the door. There wasn't no way that skunk could get out. And they threw something down at the, the bottom of it. And so the Methodist went in there. And about five minutes, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, he's preaching away. But finally he flung that door open and he said, Whew, I cannot stand it anymore. He said, I got to get out of there. He said, that's nuts. That's nuts. And uh, so the Presbyterian went in there, and he, he, you could hear him preaching. He was preaching, hollering away. And so 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 25 minutes, finally that door flung open. He said, I can't take it anymore. That's stinking too bad. I can't do it anymore. And that Baptist said, watch out of the way. Let me show you how it's done. So he went in there. They shut the door on him. 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 35, 45, hour, hour and a half. And finally the door flung open, but there was no preacher. And then they looked down, there was that skunk coming out of there. She says, whew, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> so, be careful who your running partners are. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 18, the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise, go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work to the wheel, on the wheels, And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do that which uh, do with you as this potter, saith the Lord. Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. I'm going to preach for just a little while about the marred vessel and trust that God would get in this moments that we have. Father, bless us now as our prayer. We'll certainly thank you for the time to gather. We thank you for that, but we thank you more than that, Lord, for the word that can now come into our lives. And I pray that you would challenge, encourage, and convict, and do what you want to do in the lives of everybody here in Jesus' name. Amen. Many of us know that Israel was captured And they were captured because of their own disobedience. It talks about that over in verse number 8, where the Lord says, I would have, uh, if you have pronounced it, I'd have turned that evil away from it if only they had repented. And we see God give Jeremiah this wonderful lesson about the potter and the clay. And now it's easy to see, it's easy to tell who, who's who. Now we understand that the potter is God. Of course, in that day it was Israel, was the, was the clay. He said, I'd have made it and I'd made you new again, but they would not have any of it for a while. And just as a side note, uh, don't, forget and re- don't forget that God still has plans for the nation of Israel now. We see all this going on, and even somebody who's not much of a prophecy student, which I'm not a great one either, but we understand that the things that are going on looks a lot like Bible time or Bible uh, prediction of things. But here in this case, Israel was disobedient, and their problems were on, a, on them But we see that the potter is making a work on a wheel and the potter being God and that clay being us and that wheel being what God allows us to go through. But I want to give you a few things that I believe will be a blessing to you. I see first in verse number 4 that there's the marring of the vessel. And I'm looking at a bunch of people this morning that we've messed up. You say, Pastor, you don't even know me yet. You've messed up. 
How do you know? Because the Bible says that we're prone to do those things. You say, Pastor, you haven't been following me around. I have not. You haven't been paying uh, paying attention to what I do. I have not. But I know enough about me. And the Bible says about all of us that it's not within man to guide his own steps. We are prone to wander, as the old songwriter wrote, Lord, I feel it. And we understand that the marring of the vessel in verse number four, the Bible says, and the vessel that he made the clay was marred in the hand of of the potter, and we're finding that we're not a very good product to work with. I read sometimes about uh, potters, true pottery uh, as it's made, and especially back in the day that this would have been, that clay would have been somewhere out back, and that clay would have been some soupy and others that was a little bit firmer, and, and those uh, potters would bring that in, and they would use their feet to, uh, to pedal and turn those wheels. Now they'd be uh, motorized, but they would turn that wheel, and those potters would take that clay, and God takes that very noticeable illustration that people in that day would have been very aware of, and He takes it to the country of Israel, and now He takes it to us because the Word of God's been forever settled, and He takes it to us, and He says, you and I are that clay that's on that wheel of the potter, and not only are we that clay, but we're that marred clay. The the book of Romans, chapter number 12, talks about us presenting our bodies a living sacrifice. And that living sacrifice, there's a problem, like one old preacher said, and I mentioned it before, there's a problem with that living sacrifice. That living sacrifice is forevermore crawling down off off the altar. You, like me, have maybe been to this altar or some other altar, or maybe no altar, but an altar in your heart. And you said, Lord, I give my all to you. And you meant it. But it was only hours or days later that like Peter, when he meant it, said, Lord, I'd go, I'd do anything for you. I'd die for you. I'd live for you. And before you know it, you're like Peter, that cussing and denying over here. And you're not right with the Lord. I could say, I wouldn't want to offend the ladies, but I could say it's like the ladies that say to their husband, I love you. And five minutes later, I hate you. And they meant it both times. (laughs) But I wouldn't say that because I don't want to offend the ladies in the audience. But we're that way. Lord, I'll do whatever you want. But then in a little bit, we're after our own will. We're getting back into what we want. We're that marred vessel. Eugene Robinson played for the Atlanta Falcons. They were going to the Super Bowl in 1999 as I read the story about it. They lost that game to Denver, but Robinson was outspoken about his moral life and his faith. He was one of the team's most popular players, so I'm told. The Saturday morning before the Super Bowl, he received the uh, Bart Starr Award, which was from a religious group, but it was given for high moral character. Saturday before the game on Sunday. Saturday night, he was arrested for immoral and wicked behavior that totally was against everything that he supposedly stood for. He messed up. You messed up and I messed up. Sometimes we say, oh, so-and-so, they fell into sin. I don't know if we fell into, fall into sin. We may just walk or plunge or dive into it. I don't know about all that. But I know we get into problems. You remember that David, the great king, the psalmist of Israel, the wonderful, the man after God's own heart, is also the one that got into sin with Bathsheba, but I'm looking at all of us today and I'm realizing that we have a great potter and we have a great God Almighty, but we are a marred vessel. And the Bible says that the vessel that He made of clay was marred in the hands of the potter. And I'm looking at you and I'm looking at me and if we didn't have the Word of God, we would be most miserable and we'd say, I give up! But I want you to look again what he says. Not only do we see the marred vessel, but then the making again in verse number 4 as we continue. He says, the marred vessel in the hand of the potter, so he made it again. I tell you this morning, he didn't just glue it back together like you did when you broke something that you weren't supposed to be have a hold of of your grandma's anyways. He didn't piece it back together. He didn't tie it. He didn't, uh, he didn't try to uh, make shift it, put together. He made it again. And let me just say here this morning that God has a wonderful ability to make you again when you've blown it and when you've messed up. I understand there's consequences for all we do. I could, standing here today as your pastor, I could do things in my life that would make the church and the leadership and you as a pastor say, well, we love you, but we're going to have to ask you to step down as pastor. 
But that may tr happen. I pray God it never does. But if it did happen, you may ask me to step down as pastor, and you should. And you may should get somebody else, and that'd be wonderful. That'd be what you needed to do. But one thing a, a church or anybody else can't do is tell that fallen, disgraced pastor that's not doing what he's supposed to that now God will never use you. He might not use you in the position you had before, but you can do something. Amen. Great pastor that I have the most utmost of respect for. He says, if I couldn't do this because of some action or something, he said that I'd want to find a church. If it wasn't this church, he said, I'd want to find a church. If I couldn't be in the pulpit, I'd want to be on a lawnmower out there. If I couldn't be on a lawnmower, I'd want to be out there scraping something. If I couldn't be out there scraping something, I'd want to be doing something for God's glory. And I look not only at the marred vessel, but I see the making again. I told you about David as we understand that great uh, king that got into great sin. And that loss of the baby that was born out of that unholy coming together. The Bible says in 2 Samuel that the sword shall never depart from thy house. And we understand there's consequences for sin. But in the midst of all that tragedy and in the midst of all that uh, wickedness, if you'd have been around there for, after a while, You'd have heard something. You'd have heard the cry. Not of the one baby, because God said it took him on to heaven. But you'd have heard the cry of Solomon. That the sun was going to rise again in David's life. Oh yes, there was consequences. But God was going to make it again. And the potter can take that clay and make it again. And can I just say a word for those that may think I'm being too soft on sin. Maybe you think, well, you're letting people off easy. I don't believe that David ever forgot the wickedness he had gotten involved in. And I don't believe it's your job or my job to go around reminding people of the infractions and the problems and the sin that they've got involved either if they're saved they do have a holy spirit the holy spirit inside of them i believe as i always say i got enough to say grace over in my own life i don't need to start looking at yours i'm just saying that god is good at taking those marred vessels and doesn't piece it together doesn't make a hodgepodge of it the bible says he takes it and he makes it again I'm so thankful that God makes it again. But I want you to see at the end of the verse, not only the making it again, but I see the method that the potter gives. He says, so he made it again, another vessel. And then I love what it says at the end. As seemed good to the potter to make it. We need to look at our all-powerful, almighty God that saw fit to make things again. And I'm talking to people. I know that you have blown it. You say, how do you know? Because I know I have. We all fall short of what God wants us to do and what Satan would like nothing more than when you do mess up and you do blow it. He would like nothing more to keep you down in that stifled position down there and say, oh, I can never attain anything. I can never do anything. You're right. You never can. But God through you can pick you up and use you in some way that the Lord wants you to do, that, what, what, that He wants you to take part in. I'm thinking about people in our families and and sometimes we've blown it with some sibling or some father or, or child or whoever. And if you're not careful, Satan will convince you that all hope is lost. Satan will convince you that there's no way that you can ever have that relationship again. And I understand, again, consequences may be there. But there's a humility that needs to be in our hearts to say, God, please, would you make this situation again? Can I just say it like this? We better not be telling God what He can and can't do. God, you can't do anything with this. Don't be so sure. My God and your God did it as seemed good to the potter. Now can I just tell you this morning that it's a good thing that I'm not God and you're not God? Because if you caught me on a good day, I'd say, run along, you're fine. If you caught me on a bad day, I'd lower the boom on you you know why because i'm like my mamaw used to say she, she said john you're fickle that's an old word just means you go back and forth you're never consistent you don't you don't uh, stay even up and down up and down so all of us are fickle 
I mean, we're this way one day, we're another way the next day. And if your future was in my hands, you'd be in trouble. If my future was in your hands, I'd be in trouble. But thank God that the potter is that consistent, all-powerful, all-knowing God. And we understand that the method of the potter is one that he says that he made it as seemed good. Folks, we're going to have to take our hands in many ways off of our lives and let God do what God wants to do. But pastor, you don't know. No, you don't know. But pastor, you weren't there. I know, but I know who was there. And I know who can take and bless what you and I messed up. Did God author or want or desire the problems and the sin? No, but He did allow them. And even our mistakes and our sin and our marring, God can take that and make us in to what He wants us to be. Peter, as I mentioned, he was that cussing, denying, I don't know him, but God made him something that could be glorifying God once again. David, that adulterer, murderer, yet God took him and made something again. Rahab, somewhat of a wicked lifestyle. Moses was a doubter, didn't know whether God would or wouldn't provide for the people, and, and he would get mad at the Israelites. And a murderer, yet God took him. Jacob, a deceiver, Somebody that was dishonest at every chance he got. But God took Moses and Jacob and Rahab and David and Peter and so many others. And the potter got that wheel fired up. He started pumping on that wheel and started taking those all-powerful hands. And that clay that had been marred, messed up, God started making something pleasant again. Now, in olden times, the potters would sometimes have this little display place. And in that display, we would call it just a store. You ever go to these amusement parks or all these attractions? You know where they always take you out of before you leave after you spent $40 to get in? You know where they always take you through? The gift shop. Why? Because they want you to spend a little bit more of your money. You can't leave uh, this or that attraction without a snow globe. (laughs) Well, on all of these, many of these old pottery shops, they would have just shelves with finished pottery. Some of it had been formed and then glazed over and baked in the oven so that it would be uh, useful for, uh, for, for food and consumption. But regardless, this pottery would be out there. But many times, the wheel in the back or in the, in the middle and then in the rear would be those slimy clay pits where they'd bring that clay in. Some of them had to be watered down because they were getting too dry. Some of them had to lay there for a longer, a while longer, let the water evaporate out of them. But that potter would go out and get the clay that he thought was just right. And he would put that on that wheel. He would mold it and make it and turn it into what he wanted, and once in a while, he would find that that clay was a little too wet still. He would take it off that wheel, and he would set it aside. I believe we've been set aside a few times. Thinking that we were forgotten by the potter, but the potter wasn't done with you. The potter was just setting you aside because there needed to be some water evaporate out. Needed to maybe, it was too dry, put a little more water in and Work it in. And that potter's got different projects going on. Well, our potter's got lots of projects going on. But when he gets that clay like he wants it, gets it molded, before it goes to the shelf, it gets all finished up and puts it out there on display for someone to see and buy. Do you know the difference between the shelf on this side And the clay on this side, the potter in the middle. 
And you may be thinking, Pastor, my life's a mess. Can I tell you what the difference between a mess and a miracle is? The potter in the middle. Would you turn to Ephesians chapter 2? Now, all of us have been to different places where somebody wanted to show something off that they got. Or maybe you have something in your house that every time you get a chance, you'll show it to somebody. Amy and I were up at this lady's house. It was in Iowa. And I don't know why she did this, but she collected, and you may do this, so please don't take offense, but she had hundreds of them, salt and pepper shakers everywhere in this house. I'm thinking, what kind of food are you seasoning, lady? <laughs> had them everywhere. I would not collect it. I'm not a knick-knack kind of guy. I'm not a, I don't like clutter. I'd like it to be clean and neat. But whatever. If it's an old car in the garage, I'd go out and see that. If it's a collector's gun or something like that, I'd like to go see that. And different things I am interested in, but that's not one of them. But many of you, many of us, have something that when a guest comes to your house, says, hey, before you leave, I want to show you something. Maybe not on the first visit. You don't want to seem like you're a weirdo. Maybe on the second visit. Hey, why don't you see my salt and pepper collection? This lady, you couldn't miss it. In every room, she had so many of them. Um, but we've got some things that you want to show somebody. Oh, I want to show you something. That's your display. That's you putting something on display that you're very proud of. Proud in a good way. You're proud of. Maybe because it was from a trip that you took. Maybe it's a landmark trip in your life or life and you and your spouse. Wow, this is where I got that. Well, you're in Ephesians chapter 2. Look here. Verse number 7. That in the ages to come, He, God, might show the exceeding riches of His grace in His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, God might show off His little workmanship that he might show off his prized possession us his exceeding riches of his grace you say well that's just the grace of god that's right but look at where it's uh ex exploded or expounded or uh shown the riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through christ jesus i don't certainly want to be irreverent but as if God says, there's a trophy of grace over here. I had to work really hard on this one. God doesn't work hard because nothing's hard for God. You understand, but I'm just talking about in our mind so we understand. God has to do a lot on some of us more than on the others. Can I challenge you to not be so hard on other people that God's working on? You know where I find that we get so holier than thou is when somebody's having a problem in an area that I don't have a problem with? Meaning that, oh, I don't struggle with that, so it's so easy for me to take pot shots at the person that does. Because the turnaround's probably going to be the same. The things I have problems with, they probably don't. So they could just look back and say, no, let's not shine the spotlight on that. Let's look on the thing you're having struggles with. But I would challenge all of us Let's let God work on the clay. Let's quit taking um, shots at the other piece of clay, other pieces of clay. Let's stop complaining about them and just say, Lord, I'm here. Now that clay, as it says, some of it was marred. And so I'm told as you read that sometimes it gets too dried out or there's a lump, there's a hard spot in it. And that potter's really got to work on that. I don't have to have you raise your hand, but... I think that you all know what it's like when the potter's got to work a little extra on some hard parts of your clay. But I'm asking everybody to let God, the potter, shape the clay like He wants to. Because Jesus Christ is trying to do a work in your life and in my life to make us more like he is if you're here this morning you're saved it's time for you to quit messing around and quit trying to shape it yourself and just say lord you got it i'm not going to try to be as hard and obstinate as i have been in the past 
I'm also not going to criticize the other pieces of clay, but I'm also not going to give up. I'm not going to be discouraged by what's happened. I'm just going to let you make it again new if you so choose. If you're here this morning and you're not saved, you don't know the Lord as your Savior, you know about Him, but you don't know Him personally, you're not sure of it. Can I point you to Jesus Christ? The God, the potter, wants to make your life into something. And it's going to begin when He saves you. Can I read to you one more verse? Here's when our piece of clay will be done. We love to finish stuff, don't we? Psalm 17, verse 15. The Bible says, As for me, I will behold thy face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied. He's going to give when? I shall be satisfied. And the verse continue, or concludes by saying, When I awake with thy likeness. One of these days, the potter will take his hands off of us. That'll be when he gives us that glorified body. That'll be when we spend eternity forever with him. Funny that one piece of clay would look at another piece of clay and complain about what the first one did that the second one didn't do. As if somehow we have a right to boast. <laughs> but I'll be satisfied. When I awake in thy likeness. This morning. Maybe God's allowed you to see some things. And you're realizing. I've messed up so much. I've not only had some hard spots. I've had some concrete spots it seemed like. Let the potter. Make it again. Father, I pray that you bless us. And Lord, I pray that every believer in this room would allow you to continue your work in their lives. I pray, Lord, they would not get frustrated, would not get discouraged and downheartened because you're Shoving it all in, putting it in one more ball of clay again, and now forming it into something beautiful. Lord, give us patience, I pray. And then I pray if there's somebody in here that's unsaved, oh, dear Lord, that they would come to faith in Jesus Christ. They would allow you to put them on that wheel and make them into what you want them to be. But they need to be saved. Because that's the first step of being anything that you want us to be in Jesus' name. If you're able to, would you stand together as the ladies play something through? If God's speaking to your heart this morning, I invite you to come. Maybe you say, Pastor, that's me. I feel like I've been taken off that wheel and set aside on the shelf. That's all right. The potter's liable to pick you up any moment now. Put you back on that wheel. Make you into something that's a vessel of honor for His glory. Maybe you're here today and you're not saved. You say, Pastor, I, don't, I know I can't be all that God wants me to be because I don't know Christ as my personal Savior. My friend, if that's you, would you step out to the nearest aisle and come? Brother Daniel's right here in front of the pulpit I preach from. He'd love to take a Bible and show you how you can be sure the heaven's your home. If you're a lady, we'd have a lady show you those things. We can't save anybody, but we do know somebody who will save anybody. Jesus Christ. Maybe you've been that one that you've been looking at everybody else's pieces of clay. And God's convicted you this morning that you need to keep your eyes on you. Quit worrying about how hard somebody else is getting. Quit worrying about the little flaw over there. I like to say it like this. I got enough great, I got enough to say grace over in my own life. I don't need to start looking at others. Whatever your need is, as they continue to play one more verse, if God's speaking to your heart, I invite you to come.
thank you so much. You may look this way. Well, I'd like to say a big thank you. Brother Daniel mentioned it before, but thank you for all those that brought in candy, and thank you for those that came worked yesterday at the harvest party uh, with kids, some four to 500 kids we had, uh, 435 I believe it was, but we had, I believe we had more adults than we had kids uh, because uh, they must have been unruly children because some of them come with two or three grandparents, so... Um, no, they didn't. But they had a good time as a family. They got to come and enjoy it. And so uh, we had close, we had to have close to a thousand people here on the property. And all of them got the gospel. They got um, in written form as they were heading out and uh, their bags that had the stuff in it. But we also got to interact with just a lot of people. So thank you for serving in that way. And then many of you brought candy and, and uh, thank you for that. It was just a wonderful time just to get to know a lot of folks. And our goal is to get them here share the gospel with them. So thank you for that. Well, we just uh, thank you so much for being in church and uh, certainly appreciate all that God is doing here at Buffalo Ridge. Thank you for being a part of it. I'm going to ask Brother Marty if you don't mind to come and pray for us as we go. And uh, Amy and I are going to slip back to the lobby. If you need anything, please stop by. We'll certainly be glad to help. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this message. Lord, I pray that you'll help us to uh, apply it to our lives. And Lord, uh, pray to help us to be better um, Christians because of it, Lord. Pray that you bless the remainder of the day that you bring us back at an appointed time tonight. Lord, we just thank you again for all you've done in Jesus' name. Amen.